Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to run Python in a browser. You may have heard that JavaScript is the browser language. However, sometimes you may want to use Python instead. Maybe you want to practice your Python skills. Maybe you are not ready to learn JavaScript. Whatever the reason, it is possible to use Python in a browser with the help of the Python library. I think beginners who just learned Python as their first programming language can benefit from Python because you can create many fun interactive web projects using Python. So let's get started and set up the Python environment in our project. In my project folder, I first create three empty text files. I rename the first one index.html, the second app.css, and the third one app.py. If you have a small project, you can combine all three into your HTML file, but I like to create separate files so I can utilize the syntax highlighting in my text editor. First, I open the index.html file. To be able to use the Python library, you first need to link it to your HTML file. If you open the Python official website and click on the tutorial tab on the top, you can see a block of code. We are going to copy this block of code into our index.html file. You can see in the head tag, there are two linked scripts. The first one is the main Python file, so you can use Python in the browser. The second one lets you import standard Python libraries. In the body tag, you call the Python function on load. And there's another script tag where you set the type equals text slash Python. This tag is where you can write your Python code. You can run the code using a local host. I'm using VS Code Editor, and there is a live server extension you can install. Once you install the live server, you can simply right click on the file name and open with live server. The extension will automatically open the page in the browser. If you see a blank page like this, don't worry. There is an error in the linked URLs on the Brighton website as of today, December 5th, 2021. You can simply change the version number from 3.10.1 to 3.10.3 .3 and save the file. Then you can go back to the browser to confirm that you can see the word hello. This means Python is working properly, and we can write our custom code in Python. Before we go any further, I'm going to modify this code a little bit. First, I add a link tag to link the app.css file we created earlier to the HTML file. Second, I add a div tag within the body and set its ID to container. This is the container that I'm going to add my custom contents. And last, I delete the Python code inside the script tag and simply replace it with import app. This way, we can write the code in the app.py file and our text editor will show syntax highlighting for a Python code. These three files are the skeleton files I use for all my simple web projects. Now let's open up our app.py file and write some code. I'm going to demonstrate basic Python usage by creating a simple to-do list. First, we need to import document and HTML from the browser module. Document lets you select elements from your HTML documents, and HTML lets you create HTML elements. For example, remember we have a div with the ID named container. We can select this div by using document container and assign it to a variable name container. Then we create an h1 heading using html.h1. We set the text to be my to-do list and assign it to a variable called to-do list. To add the new HTML element to the container, we use the left arrow sign, which is also the smaller or equal to sign. We can make a list of strings as our to-do items. 
Then we can display the to-do items using a for loop. For item in items, we create an HTML list element with the item as the content and add it to the container. Back to our browser, we can see the items are now displayed as a list. However, it's not very interesting or interactive if you just have a static list of to-do items. What if you want to add to the list or check off the items you've finished? Let's delete the static list and the for loop. First, we create a new div called the list div to contain all the list items and add the list div to container. Next, we will create a text input element using HTML.input. We will set the type to text and ID to input. Now we have an input field. We want to type in this input field, and when we press the Enter key, the list will display a new item with the words we typed. To achieve this, we can use something called event binding. We bind the input field with the key down event to a function called add item. This means when we press a key down in the input field, the add item function will run. We need to define the add item function before we can use event binding. The function takes one parameter called event. We first need to test if the enter key was pressed. So we type if event.key equals enter, we will create a list element by concatenating a checkbox input, an empty space, and input.value. Because the HTML elements are represented as strings, we can use the plus sign to concatenate them. We add this list item to our list div using the left arrow. Next, we reset the input.value to empty string, so the input field is empty again for the next item. Going back to the browser, we can now add list items and checkboxes by typing in the input field. Last, we want to add a clear list button to remove all the items in the list. We bind the button to the click event. The clear list function simply sets the list div.html to an empty string. Again, we test the clear list button in the browser to make sure it can actually clear the list. You can style the to-do list by adding CSS code to our style sheet. Here I'm changing the font color of the H1 element to blue. Now we have a simple to-do list. We can add items, check them off when we're done, and clear the list and make a new one. I hope you learned something new from this video. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. Thanks for watching and see you next time.